Today, Bitcoin jumps to $67,000. Ripple announces plans to enter the dollar-backed stablecoin market. And Google's general counsel speaks with us exclusively on camera about the tech giant's lawsuit filed today against crypto scammers. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Mackenzie Segalos. Cryptocurrencies in the green again today as Bitcoin jumps back to the $67,000 level. By noon, that cryptocurrency was up 2.7%, Ether rose 1%, and XRP gained 1.7%. Okay, let's talk about the top stories. Ripple is jumping into the $150 billion US stablecoin market. The issuer behind the XRP token announced plans to launch a stablecoin backed by US dollar deposits, bonds, and other cash equivalents. Now, Ripple is entering a field dominated by Tether and Circle. Last year, payments giant PayPal also entered the space with its own dollar-backed stablecoin. Next, the SEC is asking for comments on a handful of potential spot Ether ETFs. The regulator opened the three-week comment period for proposals submitted for Bitwise, Fidelity, and Grayscale. This comes after the SEC issued a series of delays for spot Ether ETFs, and many experts see a much more difficult path to approval for these products than the spot Bitcoin ETFs approved back in January. Last up, the former head of legal and compliance for crypto Ponzi scheme OneCoin was sentenced to four years in prison for her role in the $4 billion fraud. Irina Delkinska was also ordered to forfeit more than $111 million. She ran the day-to-day -day operations of the Bulgaria-based company that marketed the OneCoin cryptocurrency. She previously pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit wire fraud and conspiracy to commit money laundering charges. We reached out to Dilkinska's attorney for comment, but didn't hear back right away. Others tied to OneCoin have also been sent to prison, including a co-founder of the scheme who was sentenced to 20 years in order to forfeit $300 million. All right, for our main story, Google filed a lawsuit this morning against a group of crypto scammers who allegedly defrauded more than 100,000 people around the world by uploading fake investment and crypto exchange apps to Google Play. Google says that it is the first among its peers to take legal action against crypto scammers in an effort to set legal precedents to protect its users. Crypto World's Talia Kaplan spoke with Halima Delane Prado, Google's general counsel, about the new lawsuit in an exclusive on-camera interview. Big news from Google filing a lawsuit against crypto scammers who allegedly began their scam in 2019, creating fake investment platforms and crypto exchanges that were available on Google Play. Can you take us through some of the claims made in this 33-page lawsuit? Sure. So this is a unique opportunity for us to use our resources to actually combat bad actors who were running an extensive crypto scheme to defraud some of our users. By example, they created fake companies uh, and fake apps that enticed users to invest. Um, and when doing so, that investment led to them losing their money. Now, in 2023 alone, we saw over a billion dollars within the US of cryptocurrency fraud and scams. And this allows us to not only use our resources to protect users, but to also serve as sort of a precedent to future bad actors that we don't tolerate this behavior. And I understand you're bringing civil RICO and breach of contract claims against these scammers who allegedly created more than 87 fake apps? That's correct. Unfortunately, as new technology arises, bad actors exploit that technology to try to defraud users. Now, we have teams that work around the clock to detect fraud and spam and abuse. And when we find a unique instance in which we can actually go a step further, we'll actually engage in affirmative litigation, filing a lawsuit to actually create legal protections for our users in a more constructive way. Expanding on that, why did you feel it was important to take the step to file a lawsuit as opposed to just outright banning these scammers from Google? There's an opportunity to do more, right? Our Google Play teams are constantly looking for ways to increase our ability to protect our users. Now that's through the review of apps that come up on Google Play to actually partnering with third parties like uh, ScamSpotter to give users, I guess, tips and tools of the trade to protect themselves. Now there's a third angle to that. Not only do we investigate and shut down fraudulent apps, 
And we actually look for another way where we can use litigation as a tool to help our users. And this was a unique case to do so. And in fact, we're the first tech company to go after them in the cryptocurrency standpoint. I was going to touch on that, mentioning that Google says it is, in fact, the first major tech company to go after crypto scammers, and you're hoping to achieve legal precedence so that hopefully this doesn't happen to your users in the future. But what else are you trying to achieve through this lawsuit? Sure. So this is actually the result of a team within legal that doesn't just engage in, say, just this lawsuit. This is not our first rodeo, if you will. We look for opportunities to protect our users throughout. So back at the beginning of COVID, we also filed a lawsuit against scammers who went after senior citizens um, who were trying to buy puppies during COVID. More recently, this fall, we also went after scammers who were using AI to, to fraudulently induce users as well. So we look at this as a constant way in which litigation and the legal system can be used as a tool for our users and to actually prevent any further actors from bad behavior. What do you think made these scams so incredibly convincing to the point where a lot of people fell victim, they contacted Google and they said once they tried to withdraw their money, they couldn't. They were asked at times to add money in order to withdraw the money that they had invested in these platforms and these fake platforms, allegedly. So what do you think was behind all of this? What made it so incredibly convincing? Was it the fact that they were adver advertising on YouTube, for example? I actually think it's because it's a new technology. Users are less familiar with how a new technology works, be that cryptocurrency, be that AI. And so as a result, there's an opportunity with the user's lack of knowledge to take advantage of them. And that's what happened in this case. Now, Google says that it had suffered economic damages in excess of $75,000, and you're hoping to ban these groups from ever using Google and from creating new accounts. What else are you seeking in this lawsuit? That's right. Fundamentally, we're seeking to protect our users going forward. We want our users to know that they can trust us to not only sort of proactively remove bad apps that are on our site, but once apps come through, that we're actually willing to go one step further and prevent those bad actors from doing it again. And that's the case here. We invest a lot of money into taking down apps that have bad content or just have nefarious purposes throughout the year. And this allows us to do that even more. On a general note, and you touched on this obviously, but what steps are you taking to ensure that consumers, that users of Google are in fact safe? So we've partnered with third parties and actually have a website that's called scamspotters.org. And it actually lists different types of tips that any consumer can look to when they're unsure about sort of getting a text message, asking them to pay for a certain bill in gift cards or a unique form of payment, or list a name of a company that a user hasn't heard of. There are steps to say, if it seems unfamiliar, research it. If it seems strange in terms of form of payment, don't send that payment through really offering practical, easy to use tips for consumers to keep themselves safe. And elaborating on that further, what can consumers do to make sure that they don't fall victim to crypto scams like the one that we're learning about today? Sure, they can pause. When you get a text that says, please send money to a particular app or download an app and that seems unfamiliar, before you click that link, research the name of that app. Look and see what the reviews say. Check in and do a little research. And when in doubt, just pause. What I found fascinating was the fact that Google took steps to try and control and mitigate the situation by deleting these platforms, these fake platforms. But then the scammers would create new apps, new investment vehicles, new crypto exchanges in order to continue to defraud your users. So what did you do in that instance? Was that the moment where you felt like we needed to file a lawsuit? I think it's that type of behavior that let us realize that the problem was bigger than just us catching one particular app and removing it. We needed to go one step further to say that the behavior in total should be stopped. And that actually helped us in terms of actually building our case. And how did this even come on your radar? I mean, obviously, I know users contacted Google saying they couldn't withdraw their money, but was law enforcement involved? Do you work hand in hand with law enforcement? How did this even come to your attention? So we have a dedicated cybersecurity team that is constantly looking across all of our platforms and services to look for opportunities where we can do more or where we think that users are being abused. Now, in some cases, we're partnering with law enforcement, providing them with information, they are providing us with information that allow us to take that protection even further. 
Now, before we go, we asked Zach Shapiro, managing partner at the crypto-focused law firm Reigns, to weigh in on Google's lawsuit against the crypto scammers. I think it's a really good signal from Google that they're taking this problem seriously um, and that they don't want this activity happening on their platform. And it's really bad for their ecosystem uh, to have these scams going on. And so, you know, they're, they're trying their best to clean it up. Um, I bet there's also some component of this that is uh, trying to forestall any liability that Google might have for their platform being used for this. Uh, if I were the Google legal team, uh, I think this is helpful uh, towards anyone in the future making a claim, hey, Google, you didn't do enough here. Uh, and so I'm gonna try and hold you responsible for the fact that I lost my life savings through a fake crypto investing app on your platform. And so this might be sort of defensive in some sense too. Um, and then third, uh, if you look at the type of lawsuit that Google is doing here, it's a, a civil RICO lawsuit. Civil RICO cases tend to be among the most profitable types of lawsuits to bring, uh, largely because they allow what's called treble damages. Uh, Google mentions this in their complaint. If they are shown to win the lawsuit, uh, if they're able to you know, find the people and, and get money back, which is a big if, uh, mostly I think they're looking to kick these people off their platform. Uh, but if they're able to get money back, they're able to get three times the amount of money that they're able to prove in damages. Okay, that's all for Crypto World today, but we'll be back again tomorrow and we'll see you then.